Welcome, I'm Bev Adams. I'm an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! Last week I showed you how to use the envelope punch board to make a custom envelope. And I showed you this box, I think. I didn't like the video that I made for this box, so I re-recorded it. And this is the box that I made. Because I was out of soft suede, I made it a little bit shorter. And so I could make this one out of an 8.5 by 11 piece of cardstock. So you can use the envelope punch board to make all kinds of envelopes, all of these sizes. When I first got my envelope punch board, I decided to experiment with making it boxes with it. I started with the smallest envelope, added 1 fourth inch to the paper size, and then after that first punch, I slid the cardstock over 1 fourth inch to make a box. Then I made another box the same way, but instead of adding 1 fourth of an inch, I added a half an inch. And I kept adding 1 fourth inch increments and measuring the box height until I got to the 12 by 12 paper size and I couldn't make a bigger box. That's how I made my first chart, but I've redone it now. For today's project, we're going to use an 8 and 3 eighths square of Tranquil Tide. And we'll use some scraps of the designer series paper. You make a box just like you make an envelope, except you need to figure out how high you want your box. And then add this much to both your paper size and then a, for your score line. So I'm making a three by five and a half bottom. I need a seven and an eighth paper. I want a seven eighths inch height. So that means I need to add one and a fourth inches. That often means adding fractions. And if you have difficulty with adding fractions, I've got some conversion so you can just add it on your calculator. So I've got two and three fourths. I, I'm going to punch and score. And you might go off the side, as I am on here, just barely. So just go ahead and crease and fold. And then I need to add that same one and a fourth inches. So I'm sliding it over an extra one and a fourth. Punch and score. Now there's one other difference. You could go around like you do with the envelope punch board. But that score line is not a precise place and so even that little bit it's easy to get off when you're punching and scoring eight times. So I am going to suggest to you that you actually do those same measurements on your opposite side. Two and three fourths. I hope you don't mind my snoring dog down here. And again this is going to go off the edge just a little bit. And my second one, punch and score. And then we want to do the other sides. And for this, you do not measure. Just like when you're making your envelope, you're going to just look at these score lines and match those to the pointer, punch and score. Then slide it over to the second score line, punch and score. And turn it around halfway and repeat on the other side. Punch and score. Slide it, punch and score. The reason we needed to use the chart is that we do have our 7 eighths here. We're measuring actually this way and this is what we need to add. Then we need to snip our our tabs. These little corners here are our tabs. And I should have creased before I snipped. It makes it easier. Let me do that now. We just need to add our adhesive. I like to use a strong adhesive 
Karen tape works great. If you're still using Fast Fuse, Fast Fuse works great. And you may need to add adhesive on the edge of the tabs as well. I almost forgot to use the reverse tab, so we're going to turn the scoreboard around and punch the corners. You're going to put it in here, make sure it doesn't wiggle, and then hold it and press. If you don't hold it where it doesn't wiggle, you may get a little off rounding. So now I just need to take off the adhesive. And if you actually leave those on a little bit, it'll actually help. We're matching the, the edge here with the crease here to get a nice square box. Depending on how you want your box to open, you may want to adhere these sides and use this as your flap, or adhere here and have it open at the top. Totally up to you. You can actually have it open this way too with, without doing this flap. But I'm going to go ahead and do these tabs and have it open on the top, like so. And then we'll just decorate it by putting on your on designer series paper. So my box actually ended up being five and a half by three and three eighths. I was aiming for seven eighths and got seven eighths. So I've got some strips that are three quarters of an inch. And I just want to apply those to the sides. Again, I've decided to have the box open at the top. And I had a scrap that's four and a fourth inches square, and that should fit on here pretty well. So I'm going to cut it at a diagonal. So I'm just going to put in the corners right in that groove. And I'll, and I'll round those corners. And then I'll just need to whack off the ends a little bit, so I'm going to just mark it where I want it to end. I only marked one of the triangles so that I can just fold it and cut them all at the same time. So they will at least match. bringing in the card and the envelope from last week and this is this week's gift box. Here's the one that was a little deeper and soft suede that I made last time. And of course you could decorate it with all kinds of ribbons and things if you'd like. So the envelope punch board can not only make envelopes but it can also make boxes of all kinds of sizes. The three things that make the envelope punch board a little tricky for boxes is one you have to add fractions, two you need to punch and score two times on each side, and three the other thing that can make this a little difficult is it can go beyond this corner and go beyond the five inches here. Say you needed to um, score your second score line at six and a half inches, well here's what you're going to do. So if it's six and a half and you only have five inches, you're going to take off two inches and then four and a half. So say we want to go four and a half, four and a half, and then we can mark anywhere along here and make it go two more inches. So then two plus two is four. 
and then this will be at six and a half. So I hope you see that the envelope punch board is a really valuable tool to make custom envelopes and gift boxes. And then you can print off this chart that figures out your box height and also converts the fractions back and forth and this stand up uh, directions. This side is for the box and you can put those together and slide them under here for storage. If you follow this link on the video or in the YouTube description below, I'll have free detailed directions for this project and product links. I sell the Stampin' Up! products you've seen in this video. Just click the links for products you'd like to purchase and you'll be taken to my online store at Stampin' Up! Be sure to read about the frequent shopper points I offer my customers. I'd be honored to be your Stampin' Up! demonstrator. If you're new to stamping or Stampin' Up! you might want to check out the basics tab on my website where I share about stamps, ink, and paper cutting card bases and layers, and some of my favorite tools. I offer lots more resources at BevAdams.com. Click on Scroll My Projects and you can go back year by year to 2011 and click to go to the original post with directions. Getting Organized for lots of resources like a practically free stamp pad storage solution, a basic toolkit you can grab and go, labels and case inserts for just about every product, and more. Products from Bev. For information about sharing my Evernote notebook of current Stampin' Up! products, taggers to name all those layering framelits, a paper sampler for Stampin' Up! cardstock, heavy-duty bags to store your 12 by 12 and 6 by 6 paper, and for the bow maker that my friend makes that I'm always using on my videos. Save money or make money. Techie tips. Deals from Stampin' Up! Come stamp with me if you're in Ventura County in California. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and also to my website so you don't miss a thing. More organization means more time for crafting. Thank you so very much for watching. Bye! Mm -hmm.